Well, it is the final day of the Republican National Convention. The day has come for Republican presidential nominee Mitt Romney to tell America why he should be the next commander in chief. Leading up to today, a series of speeches and events that have showcased division and controversy within the Republican Party. One of the clearest examples, tension between Ron Paul supporters and the establishment Republicans. To talk more about this, RT White House correspondent Christine Frizzau joins us now live from the Republican National Convention in Tampa. Hi, Christine. Well, hey there, Liz. Yeah, really, really an interesting dynamic going on. Yesterday, we saw uh, those Ron Paul supporters, the delegates from Maine, once again uh, walk out uh, of the convention hall in unison, uh, taking up a whole lot of room, I should mention. Uh, they waited for the Ron Paul tribute video to play. They waited for uh, Rand Paul's speech, and, and then they were gone. They seemed to, to really be angry at the way everything uh, has really gone down here without even letting them have their voices heard. Christine, um, and you know, uh, Ron Paul, he declined a slot to speak at the Republican National Convention, but as you, as you mentioned, they did play this courtesy tribute video to him at the event. Here's a look at it. For those with dedication, character, faith, and conviction, sometimes that lonely path paves the way forward for millions. Ron Paul. All right, Christine, how are Ron Paul supporters reacting to that video? Frankly, some mixed reactions, Liz. We've heard uh, responses range from inspiring to offensive. A whole lot of people uh, that are here in support of Ron Paul, both, uh, you know, convention goers as well as delegates, uh, of course, happy that they had a video uh, at all. But let me put this in a little perspective. You said Ron Paul declined a speaking spot. Ron Paul declined a speaking spot because, A, he would have had to fully endorse Mitt Romney, which he says he doesn't. Uh, B, he would have had to have his speech heavily vetted both by the RNC and the Romney campaign. So, so those are the conditions under which he denied a speaking slot here. Back to this video, Liz, less than four minutes. Uh, it, it talked about the fact that Ron Paul has never voted for a tax increase, uh, that Ron Paul has never voted uh, to expand the debt ceiling. Uh, the story, though, Liz, really in what wasn't said in this video. Uh, Ron Paul has asked for an audit of the Federal Reserve and, in, Reserve, and in fact, the Republican Platform Committee has adopted that as part of this year's platform. So he was happy about that. Uh, no mention whatsoever of his position on the military. He has also called for an audit of the Pentagon. When Ron Paul says he wants smaller government uh, and much, much less government spending, he means it across the board, uh, not just from these so-called entitlement programs. He wants it from the place where the majority of the money actually is spent, and that is the military. So a lot of people who support Ron Paul, uh, by the way, as we've reported time and time again, a lot of support from military veterans. Military veterans in poll after poll have been shown to support Ron Paul above any other candidate uh, who was present in this primary race leading up to the convention here. Uh, this is an important issue, and to have it not mentioned whatsoever uh, was pretty offensive and, and, you know, frankly, and I'll use their words, repulsive uh, to some of these supporters who I spoke to. Uh, another side note, Liz, uh, it's really interesting, you know, as you know, as our viewers know, we have covered Ron Paul uh, consistently for the last four years, so it has been interesting being here uh, as a member of RT America, people coming up to me, uh, recognizing me, telling me, uh, you know, we watch RT because uh, of your coverage. And, and it's been really interesting. I think a whole lot of the other networks, a whole lot of the other mainstream media uh, and the establishment political parties here in this country, very surprised to see uh, what has happened with these Ron Paul delegates and what has happened overall uh, with this inability to come out of this convention uh, with the support and unity behind Mitt Romney that a lot of people here expected. And, Christine, you know, there is this hope within the libertarian movement that Rand Paul will carry the torch of his father, Ron Paul. But based on last night's speech, Rand Paul's speech at the RNC, does it appear that he's doing that? Well, Liz, that was really, really interesting. Uh, as I mentioned, a lot of the, the delegates in support of Ron Paul, uh, a lot of people here expected a dynamite speech, expected a speech that would sort of set the stage for a Ron Paul run in 2016. Uh, 
over the weekend at the rally, uh, he gave a very different speech in support of his father. In last night's speech, he didn't even mention his father by name. He simply talked about uh, his immigrant grandfather who came to this country uh, and had a son who has, uh, you know, became a Texas congressman and ran for president. Uh, that line met with a whole lot of applause from the audience here, uh, but really, really toned down. And that's one something I want to focus on. I mean, Rand Paul uh, talked about Obamacare, how he thinks it's unconstitutional. He talked about immigrant families that he knows, uh, you know, a Cambodian family who owns a donut shop in his neighborhood in Kentucky who went on to have children uh, who are valedictorians. Uh, really focusing on the uh, Republican message, which, you know, I will say seems to poll very well among conservatives, which is the we built that long line uh, said by President Obama when he was referring to the fact that, you know, it kind of it, it takes a village. It takes school teachers. Uh, it, it takes people who help you along the way to have a successful business. It takes uh, safe roads and bridges for you to be able to transport whatever it is that you're selling. Uh, that line by the president, of course, used uh, time and time again everywhere around this convention center and all around the forum where the convention is being held are signs that say, yes, Mr. President, we did build that or uh, we built it. Uh, this is a line that Rand Paul focused heavily on in his speech last night. Uh, I will, uh, I, I do want to mention he, he did uh, sort of touch upon uh, his father's message and his message of far less military spending. Uh, take a listen. Republicans and Democrats alike, though, must slay their sacred cows. Republicans must acknowledge that not every dollar spent on the military is necessary or well spent. Uh, so really, uh, very little said by Rand Paul, Senator Rand Paul from Kentucky, about uh, the oversized military. He said, uh, you know, the United States needs to be careful not to trade their liberties uh, for a, you know, false promise of security. But really, that was it. So from the perspective of Ron Paul supporters, and that's really who we've been talking to quite a bit over the last few days, from their perspective, a disappointing speech by Senator Rand Paul, uh, because they really wanted to hear more uh, of these messages that has re have really drawn them uh, to the, his father, you know, Congressman Ron Paul from Texas. Uh, you know, I I've seen a, a lot of discussions on the internet today, over Twitter, over email, uh, people just talking about how disappointed they are, uh, calling Rand even uh, just uh, another member of the GOP establishment. And I mean, it seems like that's what happened, that he kind of stuck to talking points that are more palatable for the establishment GOP. Is that kind of feeding these fears within the libertarian movement that Rand Paul, who they hope will carry the torch, is going to be more of a turn, turn out to be a sellout? Well, you know, you can say a sellout or you can say somebody who wants to get in uh, by playing by the rules. You know, uh, the common expression, you can't govern if you can't if you don't win. Uh, well, perhaps that's what Senator Rand Paul is trying to do. He's trying to carry uh, the, the Ron Paul revolution messages uh, and do so in a place where he can actually implement them, as opposed to, uh, you know, this side movement, which, I've, as we've seen over the years, has grown, has become very popular, has become very large. But, uh, you know, when you break down the numbers, Ron Paul Paul, uh, you know, couldn't get past this primary process to get uh, enough delegate numbers uh, in order to become the nominee. So perhaps, you know, and we don't know. We don't know. I, I got to mention this, Liz. Uh, we don't know what Rand Paul's speech looked like uh, when he submitted it to the Republican National Committee uh, for vetting. We don't know if it said uh, a whole lot more about the military industrial complex, about auditing the Pentagon. Um, we don't know what he wanted to say first, but uh, it seems to me, Liz, and this is just from my observation, uh, that, that this is a guy who's trying to, to you know, play to both parties, to, to play to the support of his father and also to actually be in office long enough uh, to do something. All right, Christine, thanks so much for staying on top of everything over there in Tampa. That was RT White House correspondent Christine Frizzow.